Our magnetic clutch is at a maximum. We saw in the last video that a magnet such as this one produces magnetic fields. Now, how much magnetic fields passes through a surface? We answer that question using something called magnetic flux. Magnetic flux, which is represented with this symbol, sub B. Now, there are three factors that influence the amount of magnetic fields that can pass through a surface. These three factors are as follows. Number one is the strength of the magnetic field. How strong is your magnet? The greater the strength of the magnetic field, the greater the magnetic flux. Magnetic field strength. And we represent the magnetic fields with the letter B, with an arrow on the top because it's a vector field. Number two, what is the second factor that influences the magnetic flux? It's the area. So, if you have a larger surface, if I were to enlarge in this purple circle, then I would have a greater magnetic flux because more magnetic field lines would pass through a bigger circle. So, that means magnetic flux is proportional to area, which we designate with the letter A. And there's one last factor that influences the magnetic flux, and that's this thing. This, this is the angle. If you have an angle that is more aligned with the normal, then you have a greater magnetic flux. So for example, if all of your magnetic field lines pass perpendicular to your surface, parallel to the normal, then you will have your maximum magnetic flux. As opposed to if all of your magnetic field lines pass perpendicular to your normal line and parallel to your surface, then you will have zero magnetic flux because none of your magnetic field lines will penetrate penetrate this surface, this, this surface, this circle. The angle we of course designate with theta. So if you combine these three factors, you can get the formula for magnetic flux. So you get the magnetic flux is equal to the dot product between the magnetic field and the area. Another way to write that, it's the product of the magnetic field, the area of your surface, times cosine of the angle between your normal and your field lines. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the formula for magnetic flux. Now let's go ahead and check out a visual demonstration of magnetic flux in action with water as our magnetic field. The formula for magnetic flux is B times A times cosine theta. Here my theta is 90 degrees and of course cosine of 90 is zero and hence my magnetic flux is zero. It's at a minimum. Okay, so what's happening here? Our first scenario is that the angle between the magnetic field vector and my normal vector is 90 degrees and so the magnetic flux is zero. There there are no magnetic field lines penetrating my surface and so my magnetic flux is at an absolute minimum. My next scenario is this. The angle between my normal vector and my magnetic field vectors are 45 degrees and so my magnetic field flux is going to decrease now because less of those field lines are going to penetrate the surface. And finally, our last scenario is when the angle between the magnetic field vector and my normal vector is 90 degrees. Look what's happening. Look what's happening. I'm getting completely wet. That's because my magnetic flux is at a maximum and I'm getting completely soaked in water. And that, folks, is the consequence of having a maximum magnetic flux. completely wet with water when our magnetic flux was at a maximum. Now we're going to visually simulate what the magnetic flux is. Here I have a surface, a planar surface, and it's in the middle of a magnetic field. Where's the field? Let me enable it. This right here is the magnetic field. Each of these blue vectors represents a magnetic field line. Okay, and we're going to enable the particles. Now these particles are going to be passing through this planar surface. The more magnetic field lines that penetrate the surface, the greater my magnetic flux. That's exactly what magnetic flux measures. It measures the amount of flow of magnetic field lines that penetrate a surface. Okay, so now the angle between my normal vector, the vector that's normal to this plane, and my magnetic field is zero degrees. 
Now let's play the simulation and let's see what happens. You can see that all of the magnetic field vectors penetrate my surface. In other words, my magnetic field, uh, my magnetic flux is at a maximum. If I look from the top, you're going to see that all of these field lines penetrate the surface. But that's going to change as soon as I change my angle. Let me change my angle and let's see what happens. Okay. So I've made my angle about 40 degrees. Now you're going to see something different happening. My magnetic flux is no longer at its peak. You can see that these field lines that are crossing the plane are not completely crossing the plane because they're crossing the plane at an angle to the normal vector. Here's the normal vector. Here are the magnetic field lines and you can see they're at an angle and the angle is 40 degrees. And finally, let me make my angle all the way 90 degrees. Watch what the flux is. The flux used to be 36 uh, cubic meters per second. Now I'm going to make my angle all the way to 90 degrees. And what's my flux? My flux is zero. And that's what you expect because none of these magnetic field lines penetrate my surface. They're just passing my surface. None of them cross my surface. And so we have just discovered three factors that influence the magnetic flux. I'm going to pause the simulation and let's write down the three factors that influence magnetic flux. The first factor is the strength of the magnetic field. Okay, so the magnetic flux is going to be proportional to the magnetic field. The stronger my magnet, the more magnetic field lines penetrate my surface. Factor one. Factor two, the magnetic flux is proportional to the area. The bigger my plane, the bigger my surface, the more lines cross it. If you have a bigger window, there's going to be more sunshine coming in. If you have a bigger plane, there's going to be more magnetic field lines crossing it. So the magnetic flux is proportional to the area of the surface. And the final factor, the magnetic flux is somehow related to the angle between the normal vector and the field lines. Okay, now if I combine these three factors, it should make sense the final formula. Here's the final formula for the magnetic flux. The magnetic flux is given by combining these three factors, taking my magnetic field, multiplying it by my area, multiplying it by cosine of the angle between the normal vector and the field lines, cosine theta. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the magnetic flux equation. Now we're going to look at three scenarios using this equation. Okay, what are my three scenarios? Well, for all three scenarios, I'm going to have some kind of a planar region. Here's my planar region. And as you can see, it looks like a plane. It's oriented at 90 degrees. And now what I'm going to do at zero degrees, and I'm going to copy my plane three times. Copied it once. I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees. I'm going to copy it again. We're going to put it right here. But this time we're going to rotate it again to 90 degrees. So it's completely flat, like a sheet of paper, 90 degrees. OK, so I have my three pieces of paper, my three planar surfaces at three different orientations. One is at 0 degrees, one is at 45 degrees, one is at 90 degrees. And these three planes are in the middle of some magnetic field. So these red vectors represent my constant magnetic field, B hat or B arrow, because it's a vector field. Now each of these three planes are going to have a different normal vector. The normal vector is going to be, as the name implies, normal to the surface of the plane. So it's going to be normal to this one, it's going to be normal to this one, and it's going to be normal to this one. Okay, so for our first scenario, where our angle between the normal vector and the magnetic field line is zero degrees, what do we have? Well, we have the normal vector, which is n hat. n hat is going to be parallel. It's going to be parallel to my magnetic field. And what does that mean? That's mean my magnetic flux is at a maximum. That's when I was being drenched, when I was wet with water. It's because my magnetic flux was at a maximum. And so what can I say? I can say my magnetic flux is equal to B A cosine theta. But what is theta? Theta is zero. Theta uh, cosine of zero is one. And so my magnetic flux 
is just gonna be b times a okay scenario one done scenario two this one my theta is 45 degrees what does that mean well that means these two guys are not parallel and so what can i say i can say my magnetic flux is going to be b a cosine of theta what is theta theta is 45 so cosine of 45 is going to be root 2 over 2 that's my magnetic flux just a little bit less than the maximum and the final scenario is when theta is 90 degrees when the measure the angle between this guy and this guy is 90. so that's when my flux should be zero but let's see if that's what the math gives us we know that my normal vector n hat and my magnetic field vector which is b arrow are not parallel but perpendicular okay these two guys are perpendicular and so what does our equation give us let's see the equation gives us the magnetic flux is equal to b a cosine theta theta is 90 cosine of 90 is 0 and so all of this become zero. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Magnetic Flux. Thanks for watching this episode. We'll check you out next time.